Okay, so now I've got four servos connected to outputs one through four. First thing I'd like to demonstrate is the over voltage feature. I'm going to connect a 12 volt power supply to the servo DMX. Normally this would cook your servos with most servo controllers. As you can see the servo DMX has detected the high voltage, it's flashing red to let you know. You can safely disconnect the power supply and nothing has happened to your servos. Now I'll connect a 5 volt power supply. When I do, status light will turn yellow and it's going to blink the version number on the servo LEDs. Status light will then turn blue, it will blink the DMX address, which is currently 9. And then after that, the servos will start powering up. It'll do this one by one to make sure it doesn't overload your power supply, which can happen if you turn on all servos at the same time. Alright, so here we go. Version 1.17, DMX address 9, and the servos are turning on. The status light is now red, indicating that there is no DMX signal. But I could connect the signal here. Now you can see the status light blinking green to indicate there's a good signal and the servos are moving doing what the, our uh, little demo show is telling them to do. Okay, so we'll disconnect the signal for now. Now I'll demonstrate the manual control. So this knob, if you turn it, will immediately take control over the selected servo. So by default, the servo is only allowed to move 90 degrees. So it just mimics the knob. There's a little bit of acceleration on the servo. So if I turn the knob really fast, the servo DMX is preventing it from going at full speed right now. If I use the up down buttons, I can just select a different servo. So I'll go to four. Now when I turn the knob, I can move that servo. You can use this to pose a prop if you want. So I can go to each servo, set its position, and you know put the prop in a certain position if you want to test some movements. Now what I'll do is set the limits of one of the servos. That's probably the first thing you'll want to do. So to set the limits, you'll hold the set button for a few seconds until the status light blinks blue. There we go. So now we're in limit setting mode. As you can see, we are currently setting the low limit. It's the options on the left side here. So we're currently on low limit. So if I turn the knob, it will let me go all the way to basically what's equivalent to 0.5 milliseconds, which your servo may not be able to do. So if your servo stops as you're rotating the knob, don't keep going. You should probably back off a little bit because each servo has a different uh, limit. They can't all go to the full extent of the knob. So I'll make it approximately horizontal. I'll set it there. And now I'll press down to go to the high limit. So that's the current high limit, but I'm gonna change it. So I'll make it horizontal the other way. See, that's actually too far. You can hear the servo uh, kind of buzzing if I go too far, so we don't want to do that. So I'm going to back it off a little bit. So I'll set that as the high. Third option is center. So if your servo wasn't perfectly centered, if you just wanted to tweak the center position without having to touch the limits, you can just sort of center it using the uh, center option. That's good if you want to center some eyes or a, you know a head turn or something without having to constantly go back and shuffle the low and high limit. And option is the last one. That one tells the servo if it can sleep or not. One by default lets the servo sleep. If you set this to two, then the servo will not be allowed to sleep. So we'll go back to one. And you can review your settings if you want. That's your low limit, your high limit, our center position. And that's it. So everything's good. Now we'll hit set, and as you can see now, when we turn the knob, we have the full extent of the servo, the full range, versus this servo, oh, the second servo, which was at the uh, default range, which is the 90 degrees. 
So to change a different servo, you would just choose the next servo using the up and down and then repeat the process. You would just hold set again. So we'll go back to one. And now I will set the speed and acceleration. So by default, as I mentioned before, we have a little bit of acceleration control on there. To adjust it, you just tap set. The light turns solid blue. It immediately starts bouncing back and forth between the two limits using your current acceleration. So if I start slowing it down, you can see the current value here. Our acceleration value is four. You can see it slowing down. And if I go to full, that's as fast as the servo can possibly go. So I'll actually set it at the maximum speed right now and then We'll adjust just the speed. So the speed is different. It doesn't actually slow it down and ramp it up as it's reaching the endpoint and leaving the endpoints. It just controls the maximum speed. And again, your current value is shown on the servo LEDs. So between the speed and acceleration, a little mix of the two, you can really smoothen out a lot of the movements and make them look a lot more organic than they would if there was no uh, motion control on them at all. All right, so I'll uh, put a little bit of acceleration on there. And I'll save that. So as you can see, it doesn't matter how fast I turn the knob, it would be the same with the DMX signal if you move the, or you've made the DMX signal change in value very quickly. The servo will never move faster than that. If we go to the other servo, which still has the default settings, you can see that one's a bit faster. If we go to the third servo, I'll set that one to maximum. Now you can see that one's really fast. If we connect our DMX signal again, we have to wait for the manual control option to expire. Currently it's yellow, that's showing us that we're in manual mode. So that's now expired and our DMX program is running. You can see this one's even a little bit jumpy. This has no speed and acceleration control on it. And the DMX values are actually changing a little coarsely. They're not smooth as they increase and decrease. So you can see the servo jumping as it moves. The other servos all have speed and acceleration, which allows the servo DMX to smoothen out the movement between the values. So it really helps a lot if you can apply even a little bit of acceleration to your servos, and it really makes a big difference as far as how they move. So another neat trick is that you can actually adjust the acceleration and speed as the DMX signal is moving the servos. This can actually be easier than adjusting it the way I showed before without a DMX signal because now you're adjusting it to match your animation. So I'm going to pick, I'll pick servo 3. I'll hit set to adjust the acceleration and as you can see, if I slow it right down, that servo is now really slow. I'll take, I'll turn the acceleration all the way up. I'll try turning the speed right down. So it really helps to uh, adjust it as your prop is moving. Uh, you can really get a good idea of how it's going to look on the prop. Some other nice tricks are resetting. If you just want to reset one of the servos, let's uh, say you want to reset the limits or the speed and acceleration to default, then select the servo you'd like to reset. So we'll say three and just hold the set button for about five seconds. The light will turn red. And as you can see now, we're back to 90 degrees of movement and we have a little bit of acceleration and speed on it again, or the, the default value anyways. Uh, the other thing that 
as handy as if you just want to center all the servos then you can hold up and tap set and you'll see all servos go to their virtual center position that is the center position between the two endpoints that you've set so I'll give you a demonstration of that so let's go back to servo 1 I will set that as the low limit I'll set the high limit as the center okay so now when I put the knob in the center position which would be equivalent to a DMX value of 128 the servo moves to the center position between the two limits you set all the way left is there all the way right is vertical so now if I go back and do that trick again hold up tap set to center all the servos You'll see that one goes to its virtual center, and these three are at their virtual center. Now, if you want to put all servos to their true center, which would be equivalent to sending a 1.5 millisecond pulse, you hold up and set for about five seconds. The status light will start blinking green, and now all servos go to their absolute true center. It doesn't matter what limits you have set, they all go to 1.5 milliseconds. They'll stay there indefinitely until you tap set again to return to normal operation. So that's basically it. You would just repeat the process for all of your servos, set the limits, set the speeds and acceleration, and then uh, you're ready to go.